Well, good evening. Welcome to our service of evening prayer. Let's come before the Lord. Today the church rejoices in the ministry of Dunstan. An amazing, amazing person. A man who has so much to offer. Let's have a read for a moment. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 104 I will praise the Lord lord my god you are very great you are dressed in glory and majesty the lord wraps himself in light as if it were a robe he spreads out the heavens like a tent he builds his palace high in the heavens he makes the clouds serve as his chariot he rides on the wings of the wind he makes the wind serve as his messengers. He makes flashes of lightning serve him. He placed the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You, Lord, covered it with the oceans like a blanket. The waters covered the mountains. But you commanded the waters and they ran away. At the sound of your thunder they rushed off. They flowed down the mountains, they went into the valleys, they went into the place you appointed for them. You drew a line they can't cross. They will never cover the earth again. The Lord makes springs pour water into the valleys, it flows between the mountains. The springs give water to all the wild animals, the wild donkeys satisfy their thirst. The birds in the sky build nests by the waters, they sing among the branches. The Lord waters the mountain from his palace high in the clouds. The earth is filled with the things he has made. 
He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to take care of. That's how they get food from the earth. There is wine to make people glad. There is olive oil to make their skin glow. And there is bread to make them strong. The cedar trees of Lebanon belong to the Lord. He planted them and gave them plenty of water. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the juniper trees. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The cliffs are a safe place for the rock badgers. The Lord made the moon to mark off the seasons. The sun knows when to go down. You, Lord, bring darkness and it becomes night. Then all the animals of the forest prowl around. The lions roar while they hunt. All their food comes from God. The sun rises and they slip away. They return to their dens and lie down. Then people get up and go to work. They keep working until evening. Lord, you have made so many things. How wise you were when you made all of them. The earth is full of your creatures. Look at the ocean, so big and wide. It is filled with more creatures than people can count. It is filled with living things, from the largest to the smallest. Ships sail back and forth on it. Leviathan, the sea monster you made, plays in it. All creatures depend on you to give them their food when they need it. When you give it to them, they eat it. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you turn your face away from them, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and turn back into dust. When you send your spirit, you create them. You give new life to the ground. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. May the Lord be happy with what he has made. When he looks at the earth, it trembles. When he touches the mountains, they pour out smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May these thoughts of mine please him. I find my joy in the Lord. But may sinners be gone from the earth. May evil people disappear. I will praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 19 The Lord your God will destroy the nations whose land he is giving you. You will drive them out and you will make your homes in their towns and their houses. When you do, set apart for yourselves three cities in the land. It's the land the Lord your God is giving you to take as your own. Figure out the distances and then separate the land into three parts. Then anyone who kills another person can run from one of these cities for safety. They are in the land the Lord your God is giving you as your own. Here is the rule about a person who kills someone. That person can run to any one of those cities for safety. The rule applies to anyone who kills a neighbour they didn't hate and didn't mean to kill. For example, suppose a man goes into a forest with his neighbour to cut wood. When he swings his axe to chop down a tree, the head of the axe flies off and it hits his neighbour and kills him. Then that man could run to one of those cities and save his life. If he doesn't go to one of those cities, the dead man's nearest male relative may become very angry. He might chase the man. If the city is too far away, he might catch him and kill him. But the man running to the city isn't worthy of death because he didn't hate his neighbour. That's why I command you to set apart for yourselves three cities. 
the Lord your God will increase the size of your territory, the promise of your people of long ago that he would do it. He will give you the whole land he promised them, but he'll do it only if you are careful to obey all the laws I am commanding you today. I command you to love the Lord your God. You must always live as he wants you to live. Suppose you're careful to obey and the Lord your God gives you more land. Then you must set apart three more cities. Do it to protect those not guilty of murder. Then you won't spill their blood in your land. It's the land the Lord your God is giving you as your own. But suppose a man hates his neighbour, so he hides and waits for him. Then he attacks him and kills him, and he runs to one of those cities for safety. If he does, the elders of his own town must send for him. He must be brought back from the city. He must be handed over to the dead man's nearest male relative. Then the relative will kill him. Don't feel sorry for him. He has killed someone who hasn't done anything wrong. Crimes like that must be punished in Israel, then things will go well with you. Don't move your neighbour's boundary stone. It was set up by people who lived there before you. It marks the border of a field in the land you will receive as your own. The Lord your God is giving you that land. You will take it over. Suppose someone is charged with committing a crime of any kind and one witness won't be enough to prove that person is guilty. Every matter must be proved by the words of two or three witnesses. Suppose a witness who tells lies goes to court and brings charges against someone. The witness says someone committed a crime. Then the two people in the case must stand in front of the Lord. They must stand in front of the priests and the judges who are in office at that time. The judges must check out the matter carefully, and suppose the witness is proved to be lying, that he has said something false in court against another Israelite. So do to the lying witness what he tried to do to the other person. Get rid of that evil witness. The rest of the people will hear about it, and they will be afraid. They won't allow such an evil thing to be done among them again. Don't feel sorry for that evil person. A life must be taken for a life. An eye must be put out for an eye. A tooth must be knocked out for a tooth. A hand must be cut off for a hand. And a foot for a foot. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. One Peter two verse eleven to the end of the chapter. Dear friends, 
you are outsiders and not those who wander in this world. So I'm asking you not to give in to your sinful desires. They fight against your soul. People who don't believe might say you are doing wrong, but lead good lives among them. Then they will see your good deeds and they will give glory to God on the day he comes to judge. Follow the lead of every human authority. Do this for the Lord's sake. Obey the emperor. He is the highest authority. Obey the governors. The emperor sends them to punish those who do wrong. He also sends them to praise those who do right. By doing good, you will put a stop to the talk of foolish people. They don't know what they are saying. Live as free people. But don't use your freedom to cover up evil. Live as people who are God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Have respect for God. Honour the emperor. Slaves, obey your masters out of deep respect for God. Obey not only those who are good and kind. Obey also those who are not kind. Suppose a person suffers pain unfairly because they want to obey God. This is worthy of praise. But suppose you receive a beating for doing wrong and you put up with it. Will anyone honour you for this? Of course not. But suppose you suffer for doing good and you put up with it. God will praise you for this. You were chosen to do good even if you suffer. That's because Christ suffered for you. He left you an example that he expects you to follow. Scripture says he didn't commit any sin. No lies ever came out of his mouth. People shouted at him and made fun of him. But he didn't do the same thing back to them. When he suffered, he didn't say he would make them suffer. Instead, he trusted in the God who judges fairly. He himself carried our sins in his body on the cross. He did it so that we would die as far as sins are concerned. Then we would lead godly lives. His wounds have healed you. You were like a sheep wandering away. But now you have returned to the shepherd. He is the one who watches over your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. 
I will make you ruler over much. Father God, we come at the close of this day to give you thanks, to raise before you our praise for this day and all it has contained. Father God, as we come to the end of this day, we lay before you all that has been so far, all that has happened this day. But for the blessings given and received, we thank you for the things that have challenged and the things that have made us stumble. Lord, we bring them before you for the people we have wounded or those who have wounded us. We pray, Father God, for your blessings, for your forgiveness, for the light of your life which transforms us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the peace of the world this night as the President of the United States raises the bar by proclaiming that NATO is needed more now than ever thanks to the foolhardy special endeavours of Russia at this time. Father God as Finland and Sweden seek to join NATO as, uh, as we find Turkey turns round and says I won't support that as we see problems again in old trouble spots, Afghanistan and the troubles there with the fundamentalists and the oppression of the people. As women's faces are banned from TV screens and as Afghanistan's rulers tighten the restrictions more and more to erode every and all freedom that women found in that place. Father, we pray for the peace of the world, for Tigray, for Somalia, for all that is happening in the nations of the world, Syria and its oppressive regime, the natural world where some 70 elephants died in the last year, because of the ongoing drought, and that drought is not just killing animals. But with the rainy season gone, with the crops dying, the people, the inhabitants of East Africa, are in disarray and in need. Father God, we pray for the situation in Abuja after violent clashes broke out. Father, we pray for the peace of Nigeria and its many struggles. And as we pray for the struggles in Africa, we pray for South Sudan as it gets its first permanent bridge over the Nile, the Freedom Bridge on the edge of Juba springs so much, so much in terms of congestion ceasing for traffic, for freedoms of transport for the people and so much more. And we pray for the nations this night who are seeing terrible heat waves. We pray for India and the smog and the excessive heat and all that is happening there. Lord, we bring before you the needs of this world. Peace between Russia and Taliban. Sorry, Russia and Ukraine. My head's not working, guys. The Taliban to cease. The European nations to stand together as one. Lord, we pray that as we look at the struggles, 
we might see peace. As we look at the needs, we might see your hand. And for those countries struggling with COVID as we approach 178,000 deaths in our nation, Father, we pray a common sense. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people on our hearts and minds, for Philip and his continued recovery after his surgery, for the Popoff family and for all of this happening where they are in Kiev, that they and their family and friends and all in that nation may know your protection and your peace. And as we pray for those we know, Lord, we pray for Josh Eden and his continued health needs. We pray for John Hambridge and his needs at this time. For Beryl Davis, and we give you thanks that she is home. For June Cottrell as she embarks upon a course of radiotherapy, having Catched, captured the ca the cancer. Now they seek to just eradicate any chance of anything else. For Pat Treadwell and his cancer, for Margaret and all that's happening with her oncologist, and for Graham, as he looks for that much needed transplant. For the Palin family and their needs. For Rebecca. And for Emma, two women suffering from long COVID. For the Gibbards and their needs. For the Hatton family. For Jane. That you would surround her with your peace, your light and your healing. And for Mary as she continues her recovery. And Father, as we think of the people on our hearts and minds, we lift to them now. Asking that you would be God in their lives and in ours. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who raised up Dunstan to be a true shepherd of the flock, a restorer of monastic life, and a faithful counsellor to those in authority, give to all pastors the same gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may be true servants of Christ, and all his people, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and for ever Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. So thank you for being with us this evening and whenever you watch this, may you know God's peace, his blessing his light and his joy and if we can do anything to be of any help don't hesitate to give us a shout bless you take care have a good evening and a good weekend oh it is soon almost upon us a day to go bless you guys